has snatched two senior judicial officers from us who were in service. The same cruel hand also snatched from us one of our own who had retired, most specifically the Justice Elizabeth Nahania. We lost Honorable Justice Ruby Aweri Opio in December, and uh, today we are celebrating the life of yet another senior member of the bench, Justice Kenneth Kakoro. I can only ask the Lord God to receive Justice Sakuru in eternal glory. We've been informed Justice Sakuru passed on in Aga Khan Hospital in Nairobi, Tuesday, 7th of March, 2023, two days ago, to be more specific. The deceased Justice had suffered from cancer and had received special treatment for over two years, both within Uganda and abroad. And, and let, let, let me clarify and uh, dwell on what my Lord, the Chair of the Judicial Service Commission, uh, presented here. It is true. Honorable Justice Kenneth Kakuro wrote a letter to the President through me seeking early retirement on account of his ill health. When he brought it to me, I said, Kenneth, is this ill considered? The you I know, should you retire now, you'll die sooner than you would have died to go home, because you'll be redundant, and you and redundancy cannot be in the same line. He said, well, I've talked about it, I've discussed with family. I made a decision not to forward that letter to the president. I called the president. I don't know whether I called him or he had called me on something. I told his excellency that Honorable Justice Sakuru had apply it through me to him, seeking early retirement, but I had declined to forward the letter to him. He wanted to know why. I gave him the reason I'd given to Honorable Justice Sakuru, but I added, I think, the one which was more important, the one which informed my decision not to forward this letter to the President. For the reasons everybody has said, The man who loved his work and gave his all to serve this country. And when he told me, I, I think I'd known earlier that it was cancer, to think that he would go home having to treat himself of cancer, I knew Kenneth would sell everything he had on earth in an attempt to remain alive. And I thought that was very unfair. So I say he's been, he, he was at the time a serving judicial officer. I would not be complicit with leaving service and having to fend for himself. So I did not forward the letter. And because of this, we did everything else that you think of with uh, the permanent secretary. Uh, Secretary to the Judiciary to ensure that we get we got funds to have Justice Sakuro treated in the best cancer hospitals in the world. <laughs> to drive my point home, that to have allowed him to go home would have left his family members destitute. The government of Uganda through the judiciary spent over 800 billion shillings to create justice Kenneth Sakura. He would not have managed this. He would not have managed this. 
When he came back from Seattle, he looked boisterous. He was good, in good spirits. That's when I told him, well, I never, I never sent your letter to the president, and I told the president I was not sending it to him. And then he said, thank you. I think, I think he wrote another letter. Yes, we could go in the other one. And then I didn't know which this situation had worsened. So when I received the information that he had passed on, I was surprised. Because he looked good and never came back to me to say, you know, my situation is bad. But well, that's, that's the world. That's the way of life. So when he came back, Hope has been restored, and we in the judiciary family had come to believe that he would be with us till retirement. But as we know, God has plans which we do not understand. Things are not ours. Justice Kenneth Kakuru has unexpectedly left us to be with the Lord. We can only pray that the Almighty God be pleased to accept his soul as his servant in eternal glory. The judiciary, the legal fraternity, and the country at large, and, and, and these many members have said, have lost a fair-minded judicial officer. His laudable decade-long service in the judiciary was characterized by sound output and tireless commitment to duty. This everybody else was talking and said. When I became Deputy Chief Justice, I appointed him to be in charge of case management in the Court of Appeal and to oversee the functionality of the registries at the Court of Appeal. He was able to bring order and help the court to substantially fight case backlog, which as you know, it's endemic in the judiciary. We shall greatly miss you, my Lord Kenneth. Now, Kenneth Kakuru, we are told when he was born, how he went to school, I'm not repeating it here now, how he, he, he served the country in the private sector before joining the judiciary. What we will forever remember him for, most especially, and again, this has been said, his tough character. You could even say he was stubborn. He called a spoon a spoon, not a small state. He was an exemplary leader and a resilient manager who moved things and produced results before demanding the same from other members of the team. The difference with him is this. He did not ask you to do what he was not doing. He led by example. He had an indomitable willpower, was incorruptible, and spoke his mind loud and clear. However, and I've not heard people say this, I think the daughter almost said it, but, but not quite. This is the, what I'm about to say is the Kenneth Sakuru I came to know. Beneath this veneer of toughness and uh, indomitable willpower lay a social, kind-hearted, loving, and humorous persona. People did not know. Kenneth was so humorous. The other thing which I've not had people say here, he would flare up very easily. You know, quick to flare up. And until you knew him, <laughs> it would scare you. <laughs> but I think my Lord, the Deputy Chief Justice made reference to this. You'd flare up now, and five minutes later, Kenneth is laughing with you. You know, it, for you, you are still mewling over this. For him, you are still. 
he entertained or held no grudge. He didn't believe in making enemies. So the moment in Kaguru was one of the most wonderful people to have around. And that also contributed to my declining to see him go. People, people think Kenneth was difficult. Yes, it was difficult, but also very understanding. A paradox. Very understanding. You respect your position as you did respect his. He was a nice man. The moment you understood who he truly was, then you knew you were in the company of someone really nice. Not the flaring and uh, the person who accepted his position with vigor and, uh, you know, appearing to be very uncompromised. He needs that veneer, as I say. He was a person to have as a friend. Allow me to humbly thank all of you who have extended the hand to the judiciary and to the family of Honorable Justice Kenneth Kakuru in one way or the other. I am deeply touched and humbled by your messages of condolences to the judiciary and family of our fallen colleague. And more so, by your coming today here in such large numbers to commiserate with us and also honor one of our great judicial officers at this unfortunate moment of deep sorrow. Once again, I thank you, the distinguished mourners, for joining us to comfort us at this hour of grief and to afford solace to the bereaved family when they must need. Let me say this, judicial sisters and brothers, especially those of us who are in the late afternoon of our lives, I haven't reached the evening, just, just late afternoon. <laughs> Kenneth was in the early afternoon. Let us take very, very seriously the need to have frequent, comprehensive examination, medical examination. We lead a sedentary life. From home in the morning you come to office, in the evening and uh, we all leave office at around 6 and you go home. If you carry out a test on these judicial officers, many of them including the Chief Justice will be having a problem with vitamin D. Because we never enjoy the sanction. So my plea to all of us, let us take medical examination comprehensive very, very serious. With these terminal ailments, we are told if it is discovered in time, it can be averted. The problem with us, and we are all victims of this failing, is that when we begin to suffer pain, that's when we now go to find out what the cause of the pain is. My very humble but firm plea is, let us take our lives very seriously. And, and when you are going, please get a fellow judicial, bring a, a fellow judicial officer along. You never know. That act alone might save your life and save the life of your colleague whom you've taken away. I continue to pray that the good Lord judge the servant brother Kenneth with a fair mind and with a merciful heart. I also pray that he continues to comfort the orphans and the widow during the eternal absence of justice, Kenneth Sakuro. I have the hope that you will continue to support the bereaved family 
they will be spending time on their rafsa. May God bless you all and may